First of all, I feel like we've already had church today. Amen? Uh, there, was, there was the fantastic... Where's, where's grandfather? Is he... Sec- Russian, Russian grandfather. Uh, U- Ukrainian grandfather. And I just want to say thank you so much for, again, for all of you coming and witnessing this dedication that we have had today. Last week, we had the opportunity to speak about... Uh, every good and perfect gift. And the fact that it comes from the Father of Lights, and wasn't that just wonderful? That is exactly what Grandfather said, that Joshua is one of those gifts, that, that even believing this, the man that married his daughter is a gift. Jason, I, I hope you heard that. He was calling you a gift. That, that, that was special. Galena is a gift. Jason is a gift. Their children are gifts. We are all probably the greatest gifts that God gives to each other because in each other's faces, in each other's eyes, we get to see a glimpse of our Heavenly Father. We are grateful today that we can move from that to what is talked about in Psalm 23 where it says in the very last piece, goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy. I want to focus our attention today on the last two verses of that wonderful psalm. It is, it is one of my absolute favorites, and the, as the years go by and as uh, things seem to keep happening in crazier and crazier ways, uh, it just brings peace to me to know that even though we live in the valley of the shadow of death, death that came again this week, not only locally, but in Paris. And, and, and people that we know, people that are our family, and people who we have watched on television. Ladies, maybe, maybe you have a handbag that has a name on it that now brings pain. Yeah, I've watched Anthony Bourdain. And I liked what he did. And I agree with President Clinton that he had the opportunity that not not many of us have to, to bring many different people around a table and to talk to them about their idea of the world. No, no, I don't have a Kate Spade handbag. But I did read about her when she made it big. And I did read about how her empire grew. And so it was a shock to hear about the loss. We have have family, too, that are dealing with the loss of friends. And I want to say that we have been remembering you in prayer this week. We live in the valley of the shadow of death. But we can say with our King David, we will not fear. We will not fear because he is our leader. He is the giver of every good and perfect gift. He is the one who comes to us and says, this is the way I want you to go. If you go this way, you will have eternal life. At the end of that very short psalm that I'm so glad that Joshua is, uh, Josh, Zachary's, Joshua's big brother is beginning to learn by heart and, and with good uh, in modern uh, English words, I mean all of us older fogies, we learned it in the King James, which was good for 1611, okay, actually the one that I learned it in. I don't even think the people in 1611 would, would understand me. It, was so, it would be so modern, you know. But when we realize that to goodness, which we learned last week, comes from God and comes through people who are sinners, people who could actually say that they have cooperated with the evil empire, even though their hearts wanted to say, no, I will not fear I will not give assent to the evil empire. We have, all of us, 
And we agreed last week, those of us that were here, it dawned upon, I think, all of our consciousness that God uses evil people. He uses sinners to bring good. We use the examples of of King Cyrus or King Nebuchadnezzar. These are people who did good things even though they did not believe in or worship God. So if, if that was something that kind of messed you up a little bit this week, don't worry, you weren't the only one. I am also remembering that it is amazing that God still uses me to do good. Now maybe that's not a thought that you've had this week, but Maybe it will be now since I've said it again. The reason that we can say that is because of the last part of the 23rd Psalm. Goodness and mercy. And mercy. Now, uh, uh, help me here. Let's see. A little test, quick test for you. What's the difference between grace and mercy? Okay. Okay. He's got it right. Let's see if you can put the word to what he has said. One, you get what you deserve. Get what you don't deserve. And one is you don't get what you do deserve. Okay, so if you don't get what you do deserve, what's that? Mercy. Any of you had parents who spanked you? Any of you had parents who you bargained with when they were about to give you a spanking? Three! Three, Dad! Three! If my brothers are watching, they're laughing hilariously right now. The general number was six. If you got three, that, that meant mercy. Mercy had been applied to you. Okay? If you got nothing, oh my goodness! Mercy! Mercy! But when you get what you don't deserve, we call that grace. Two sides of the same coin. So the the psalm ends by saying goodness and mercy. How about we say grace and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. All the days of my life. Uh, I I, I was struggling with, with a word because I, I get worried when people use the word aura, and, and, and yet that's, that's really what I'm thinking about, so I'm going to use the word atmosphere. What, what if we could say that the atmosphere that surrounds us, that people, people see, people feel when they are in our presence, is an atmosphere of grace and mercy? Because God has surrounded us with grace and mercy. We feel forgiven. We feel confident. We feel loved. We are operating on the principles of the kingdom of heaven. What if that would be be the case? That with David, at the end of the psalm, we could say too, in a very confident manner, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. It's a big statement. I believe it's one of the most amazing faith statements ever made. Because that goodness, as we learned last week, only comes from God. That grace, as we have preached and taught many times, only comes from God. And we also know that that mercy only comes from God. So to acknowledge that you are in a relationship that gives you grace and mercy. Wow, that is amazing. That is amazing. This month we we are are looking at celebrating the goodness of God. We we did that today with with, with the dedication. Wasn't that amazing? Okay, And, and that's why Amy and I chose the picture that's on the front of your bulletin, that Jesus invites the children to come and be with him. Jesus invites us into a relationship of grace where we get what we don't deserve because of Jesus and also he gives us 
mercy where we don't get what we do deserve. I don't know about you, but when I think of Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain, my heart is so sorrowful that even though they were exposed to so much of this world and the people in this world, that something something must have been missing. I, I don't know what it is. I never had a conversation with these people. Something, something must have been missing in their lives for them to decide that it was no longer worth going on. And if, if you're thinking, oh, this is terrible, why did they do that to themselves? Please, please, put your judgment away. Understand that in this world that we're living in right now, there are so many people that are hurting so much that they get to the point where they just can't take it anymore. Which is why I'm about to say what I'm going to say, and that is because of Jesus, we have hope. We have hope because of His grace and His mercy. So with David this week, I dare you, I dare you to live this piece of Scripture this week, that justice, that, that mercy and grace are going to be part of your atmosphere because you have accepted Jesus and you have wanted now to walk with Him. And so wherever you go, wherever you are, Jesus' grace and Jesus' mercy is part of what is happening around you. I dare you. Because guess what? In Santa Clarita today, there are people who are lonely. There are people who are depressed. There are people who don't know whether they want tomorrow to come. Do you care? Jesus does. And he wants some way, somehow, to get through to them. So if you get called, <laughs> that little still small voice in your head that says, go talk to that person. I don't know where you'll be. I don't know what's going to be happening. That's going to be up to God to be orchestrating that because he does that so well. I don't have to worry about it. He's going to do it. He just, know, he just needs to know that I'm willing, that I'm ready. Because my friends, uh, just as we dedicated Joshua to God this morning, isn't, isn't that just an amazing place for a child to be in the hands of God? Because as good as Jason and Galena are at watching over their children, just as good as I have been at watching over my children, God is better. God's better. He's more gracious. He's more merciful than all of us put together. So the best place for someone to be is in the hands of God. And we can help people to know that. We can help them to know the, the hope and the faith that David had when he said, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. As we celebrate this month, I'm going to be calling upon you. Won't do it today. I thought about it. It was in the notes which I abandoned. I want you to think about the goodness of God. And if I were to ask you this morning, I'm not going to do it, maybe next week, tell the person next to you where you have seen the goodness of God this week. Could you tell somebody? Could you say, you know, when this happened, I know that that was the goodness of God. In other words, are we watching to see where God is doing His thing in our world. Because it's happening, my friends, and it may, this week, it may surprise you that it's going to happen with people that you know do not even believe in God. But something's going to happen, and they're going to do something good. And you're going to say, aha, I see the goodness of God. 
And we're going to be able to come together next week and we're going to celebrate the fact that we are looking at, we're focusing on the goodness of God that David says will follow us all the days of our lives. Amen.